That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Hatching, the directorial debut of Hannah Bergholm, which premiered at the 2022 Sundance Film Festival and is being released courtesy of IFC Midnight, April 29th, 2022. You saw this film several months ago. I saw it in January. Uh huh. I did not review it then. Okay, the basic story, it's about a perfect little family in Finland. Mm -hmm. Mom, dad, daughter, son. Uh, they even have a YouTube channel uh, titled like Live, Laugh, Love or... Lovely Everyday Life. Yeah. It's a caption on it. Yeah. So the opening is like this picturesque family, but things aren't always as they seem because the mom and dad are having relationship issues. The mom has fallen in love with a, a new man and is like fully in love with him <laughs> and at a point even tells her husband and he's like, well, I guess that's the way it's going to be. But the focus is on the daughter, whose name is Tina. 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 Mm -hmm. She's like a replica of her mom. Her mom puts a lot of pressure on her to be like this perfect little girl, like in school, in sports. She's not allowed to have friends. She really gets no attention from her parents because they're so preoccupied with their own shit. And then the relationship with her younger brother is very standard. Like they don't get along. Contentious. Contentious. So one day. This sad little girl finds an egg out in the yard somewhere. Well, there's there's an introduction to that egg. Well, we can talk about that. Because okay. that kind of talks about the origin of the creature. Sure. So she finds an egg and chooses to nurture it. Like, keeps it in her bed, keeps it safe and warm. And this egg starts to grow. Until one day it's as big as like a VW bug. <laughs> and it hatches. And what comes out of it looks like something out of like Jim Henson studio. Mm-hmm. But got like all slimy, like this skinny, crazy looking big ass bird. Like a bird skeleton. And it's clear that this bird is here to like, like it's very attached to her and it wants to like protect her. So examples are, there's like a neighbor's dog that tries to bite Tina and the bird goes and kills the dog and brings it to her. Tina has a friend who's like a competitor also in the sport she plays. Gymnast. And the bird attacks the friend, like leaving the friend in the hospital. And as the bird is attacking people, like with each thing it does, it starts to look like Tina. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at a point, Tina's mom takes her to go visit her new man. Taro. And this man has like a, like a newborn kid from like his dead wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So the bird girl follows Tina. And because it kind of looks like her, or is starting to look very much like her, it starts to do something weird with the baby because Tina has negative feelings towards this man and his baby. Because her mother kind of gives it more affection than even she Right. Does. So the bird, of course, wants to hurt the baby, but the new man catches it, and because it looks like Tina, he thinks it's her. And uh, Tina has named this dual creature alley after a, a folk a nursery song that that's is sung right so, many times. so that's a, a you know a problem for them but things culminate with the the mom and the daughter so the mom and tina end up fighting alley the mm -hmm. bird daughter mm -hmm. and they end up killing or tina ends up getting killed the real daughter by her mother yeah by her mother so now she's left with alley and the end of the film is kind of insinuating that the mother's just going to raise Allie. <laughs> yeah. Who looks just like Tina minus like a scar around her mouth. The end. Yeah, calls her mother. Yeah. The origin of the bird creature is not well explained except that the opening of the film is a bird like flies into the house like through the, a window. Mm -hmm. And the family's trying to get it out because they're all freaked out. And it wreaks havoc, breaks It wreaks shit. havoc, breaks shit. And the bird gets hurt. So Tina picks it up and wraps it up like she wants to care for it. And the mom says, give it to me. And snaps its neck. So Tina has to throw it in like the waste bin outside. The, the compost bin. <clears throat> but then when she goes out to find that, when she finds the egg, it's right after she's outside and she sees like that, what might be that same bird like out on the grass. She hears this shrieking in the woods. That sounds kind of like our cat does. And she she goes off and finds it and it's that bird wounded on the ground and she bludgeons it into a bloody pulp. And then she sees that egg nearby and takes it. 
so to, to me, it's kind of like, you know, we're, we're working on the level of metaphor, fairy tale, uh, the creature. You know, this isn't exactly a new concept. No. It made me think of the movie uh, Bad Milo. You said that, it, to me, this is very much body horror in the vein of David Cronenberg's The Brood. Where, well, where, where that Samantha Eggers character is literally giving birth to these, these beings that are uh, the, her rage personified. Well, that's what made me think. I, I agree that the brood is a good example. I just think Bad Milo is like this creature that comes out of this man's ass whenever mm -hmm. like he's angry. Mm -hmm. And then with this bird creature, Allie, it's like it's attacking things that she doesn't like. Mm -hmm. So a familiar thing. I don't have any notes. I just thought that it's a quirky midnight film it's not particularly gory or horrific there's not a lot of suspense it's just like a weird little film that was enjoyable enough it seems very basic it, it is a little basic uh in that the messages the messages aren't basic and meaningless it's just that the, this is you know material that's been done before this would have uh what would have lended itself well to this movie is like a streak of like dark humor throughout sure i think this should have been like a very dark comedy well what i like so much about the brood is it, it really, again that is also metaphor and uh sensational but there's a lot more going well the brood is creepy the, there's a lot more going because you're in this dark house and well the, the creation how this doctor that's doing these experiments on people that creates this thing yeah you know this is just like oh all of a sudden there's this and it's very creature. bright like the like the cinematography is very bright there are moments like the one moment where the where Ali attacks the friend and they're like on a dark road, I thought that scene was kind of corny. Because first of all, the girls walking down the highway, like in, in the, the middle, middle of, the, of the street, and then I don't know what y'all do in Finland, but... right? And then the way like the the shadows of the creature, I just it wasn't super effective as like an eerie, creepy thing. No, but the creature effects are quite good. I think the creature's fun, but it, they are so good that I think it would have been really funny to make it. A dark comedy. Yes, because really, you know, Tinia, played by Siri Solalina, really doesn't have that much to do. No, I feel she, bad for her. I feel bad for her. She's very much craving her mother's attention, who's kind of this, she's not vicious, but she's a harpy, uh, played by Sophia Heikala. Did you relate to the daughter? <sighs> no. no. Uh, it, but it, what occurred to me is it, it's playing also with this notion of, you know, mothers and daughters. With the process of having children is also kind of in essence creating these beings that are there to that we can control but are there for our own comfort as well they, like the i mean you're doing a good analysis of it i and and it's and i would agree with that i just the, the movie didn't take me anywhere because it, you know the egg hatches when she cries on it it's absorbing her uh fluids you know she like you feed baby birds she has to eat and throw mm -hmm. up and it eats that there's very there's lots of really disgusting moments uh, that i like the one scene that does stick out for me is she's trying to hide the bird from her family, obviously. And there's a scene where the brother swears he heard like a thing. And then the dad comes and the daughter, Tina has the bird under the bed and she's under the bed. So the dad is like, what, what are you doing? And is kind of reprimanding her. But then because the bird had left this bloody dog on the bed, Tina's sheets have blood on them. Mm -hmm. So the dad is almost about to rail into her when he sees her bed has blood and she's on the floor and she's kind of holding her belly. So I'm assuming he thinks like she's on her period. So then he apologizes and leaves the room. Yeah, I just, I, I feel like that vibe had, you know, like was probably like a good direction. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it just, it feels like I wanted it to push the envelope a bit more. Because when the dad finds out, like, because then there's a scene where the dad's explaining like, oh, you're going to go see Taro or whatever his name is, the new, the new, his, his wife's new boyfriend. And then it's just kind of matter of fact. I felt like that would have been a prime opportunity to inject some humor and maybe something really dark. Like maybe the bird attacks the man, not the baby. I don't know. Ripped off the man's penis or so something. Or maybe we get a sense of why... Because we really get no insight into this family at all, except that they're like trying to be this perfect little family. And that's interesting. You know, her there are elements too of clearly she's kind of starving herself a bit. She's a bit, the the girl is rail thin as, yeah. the, as this gymnast, and it, it's interesting that uh, especially uh, since a woman directed this film, how menstruation could have tied into the metamorphosis of this creature. Uh, like I would have been interested in seeing that as well. Or maybe like her menstrual blood is what woke up like. 
you know, because her tears are what infused into the bird's egg or shell. But what if it was like the blood or I don't know. It just I feel like it just didn't go anywhere. Yeah, I, I agree. Which is why, you know, after the I think you were on, not excited to watch it because my initial reaction was kind of like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I avoided watching it because you just kept commenting on the visual effects. And it's like, okay, but the story and you wouldn't tell me. <laughs> it, I, I'm not mad I watched it. I, I think, you know, it, I mean, it doesn't really have a vibe. Like, I can't even say it'd make a good midnight screening. Like, Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to watch this at midnight. No. But uh, again, it, yes, it, I'm interested to see what she will direct from here. Do you have other notes? No, that's, what would that's you really give about it? it. I would give it two and a half out of five. I would give it two and a half as well. Thank you. Thank you.